Hello, and welcome to the Mechanical Engineering Student Access Machine Shop. My name is Jacob, and I'm one of five technical staff members that work here in the student shop. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour of the shop and show you some of the equipment that students have access to. But first, I'd like to describe what it is that we do here. The Student Access Machine Shop provides students with a unique hands-on learning experience that helps bridge the gap between the theoretical and practical worlds of engineering. Here, students learn about machinery that's commonly used in present-day manufacturing. This experience helps students better understand the abilities and limitations of various manufacturing techniques and ultimately makes them better designers and engineers. Students can get access to the Student Machine Shop by belonging to one of the three following university-based organizations class, research, and pre-approved extracurricular team-based projects. Students belonging to any one of these three organizations can receive full access to the shop after completing our comprehensive shop training course. The hands-on portion of the training covers the basic fundamentals for operation of most machines in the shop, including belt sanders, band saws, drill presses, engine lathes, and milling machines. At the end of the training, students are asked to reproduce this part. given the knowledge that they've gained through the shop training course. Once they've completed this part, they have complete access to the facilities and can make whatever components they need for their organization. With that, I'd like to show you some of the machinery that students have access to and use on a frequent basis. This is an OMAX Abrasive Jet Machining Center, or Water Jet for short. This machine uses a combination of high pressured water that travels through this nozzle right here in combination with this abrasive media that you see right here to cut through a wide variety of materials. The movements of this machine are powered by this central computer controller, which allows the machine to execute precise and repeated motion. This machine is extremely helpful when cutting out complex two-dimensional geometry like this or like this that would present challenges on other machines like a lathe or a mill. When the machine is in operation, the material is submerged underwater to help capture any airborne particulate matter and to help decrease the overall noise of the machine. The controller provides the operator with a graphical representation of what is happening in live time while the part is being cut. For the purposes of this demonstration, I won't be submerging the part underwater so that you can see the cutting action. If we take a look at the control, we can see the profile of a gear. We'll be cutting this gear out of a piece of quarter inch steel plate. I've already positioned and fixed the material inside of the machine and established a starting point for the part. Now all that's left to do is to start the cut. Here we are zoomed in on the water jet nozzle. I'm about to start the water jet so that it can cut the gear out of this steel plate you see directly below the nozzle. The first noise we hear is the stream piercing through the material. Once it pierces through the material, it can begin to cut out the contours of the part precisely following the geometry loaded onto the controller. The internal features of a part are always cut first so that the part doesn't move and the position between all features is accurately maintained. Once a feature has been cut out, the machine will stop the jet, move on to the next feature, and repeat the cutting process. This happens until all features on a part have been cut out. The laser cutter is another useful rapid prototyping machine. It's similar to the water jet in that it can rapidly cut out complex two-dimensional geometry like this or like this that would otherwise present challenges on other machines like a lathe or a mill. Unlike the water jet, the laser uses a 150 watt CO2 laser to cut through a finite selection of materials. Currently, the most commonly cut materials are plywood, hardwoods, and acrylics. Operation of the laser is safe, simple, and fast. Students design parts in a CAD software before importing the parts into the laser software. The laser is capable of cutting and engraving materials depending on how it is programmed in the laser software. The ease and speed of operation make this machine an excellent tool for rapid prototyping. Students can duplicate and alter one design after another quickly and efficiently before finalizing their designs. 
Here, we can see the same gear that we cut out on the water jet, about to be cut out on the laser. The gear will be cut out of quarter inch acrylic. While the laser is significantly faster than the water jet, its main limitation is the material that it can cut. Acrylic is brittle, and its tensile and compressive strength is nowhere near that of what steel is. However, the acrylic gear may best serve its purpose as a method to check for the form and fit of a component. If students are satisfied with the functionality of the laser cut part, they can then proceed with making it out of a more durable material on another machine, just like we did on the water jet. And here we are at the 3D printers. We have a total of four 3D printers in the student machine shop, including the three that you see before you, and a fourth one that you can't see that's off screen. They're all FDM, or fused deposition model style of machines. FDM printers take a spool of plastic filament, like the one that you see right here, and extrude this plastic through a heated nozzle. The plastic is then displaced onto a build platform like the one that you see right here. This process is repeated for subsequent layers and continues until the 3D model is entirely completed. Like most other styles of 3D printers, the machine begins printing the 3D model at the very bottom and works its way up one layer at a time until the entire print is completed. The process for 3D printing begins with the development of a CAD file or computer-aided design file. From there, the CAD file is imported into 3D printing software where it is graphically sliced horizontally and a toolpath is generated for each layer. The toolpath specifies the motion of the printer and instructs the machine where to displace material. Once the CAD file has been sliced and a toolpath has been generated for each layer, the code is then loaded onto the 3D printers and the machines can begin printing the object. 3D printing is an excellent resource for rapid prototyping. Students are able to design a component and then produce a three-dimensional physical object in only a matter of a few hours. This allows them to test the form and fit of a component and really get a sense of how it interacts with other components. Oftentimes, a design will have pitfalls that the designer could not have anticipated until having the physical part in front of them. However, because of the relative speed and ease of 3D printing, students can make design changes to their CAD files and reprint the component within only a matter of a few hours and can continue this process until they are fully satisfied with the object's functionality. Once they have finalized a design for a component, they can then proceed with manufacturing that component out of a more durable material on another machine. A CNC machine or computer numerical control is a machine whose movements and commands are executed by a central computer control. This is a CNC milling machine. Milling machines are equipped with a rotating spindle where a cutting tool is stationed. As a workpiece is fed into that rotating cutter, it removes material. The movements of the workpiece along the X and the Y axis, as well as the movement of the spindle along the Z axis, are controlled by this central controller. Additionally, the rotational speed of the spindle, how quickly the workpiece is fed into the cutter, tool changes, and much more are also controlled by this controller. The control, and in turn the movements of the machine, is driven by a conversational programming language called G-code. G-code is an alphabetical and numerical based programming language that tells the machine to execute a command, where to execute it, and how quickly to execute it. It can repeat these commands efficiently, repeatedly, and accurately. This makes the machine highly useful in large-scale manufacturing applications where thousands of parts need to be made daily, and each of those parts needs to be identical. Here is a sample part that we'll be cutting in our demonstration. I'd like to point out that once I start the program, at no point in time during the cutting process will I have to intervene or interact with the machine. CNC machines are meant to automate many of the manually based manufacturing processes previously used, ultimately increasing efficiency, quality control, and productivity. I'd also like to point out the tool changing system on this machine. This machine is equipped with a 20 station tool changing carousel. This means that up to 20 different tools can be loaded into the machine and used to cut a wide variety of features on a part. The machine will swap out the current tool in the spindle for a different one at a specified point in the program.
The Romer Absolute Arm is a CMM, or Coordinate Measuring Machine, used for precise measuring and reverse engineering of complex three-dimensional objects. The arm measures via contact measurements using an attached touch probe or via laser scanning using an integrated scanner. Its precise measuring capabilities make the tool ideal for ensuring quality control on parts, specifically to ensure that all features of a part fall within the required dimensional tolerances. In addition to the CMM features of the arm, the tool is also capable of scanning and generating a three-dimensional digital representation of the scanned object. The arm uses a laser scanner to locate the surface of an object and transmit the location to the computer via a point cloud. The more an object is scanned, the more information is transmitted to the computer. The collected data can be used as is, or a CAD model can be generated from it. The generated CAD file can then be compared to the original design of a part as a form of quality control, or modified for numerous fabrication methods such as 3D printing. This makes the arm ideal for reverse engineering of existing parts that may be too complex or challenging to measure using traditional measuring methods. Thank you for joining us today in the Student Machine Shop and for being a part of our program. Additional information about the shop can be found by visiting our webpage at me.berkeley.edu forward slash resources forward slash student machine shop. If you have any questions related to the shop or the scope of the work that we do, please reach out to us at meshops-me at berkeley.edu. We look forward to your questions and hope to see you in the shop soon.